Are you having a hard time organizing your small entry? I'm gonna tackle that today on Dear DIY Mommy. Today's question comes from Jennifer P on Facebook and she asks, how on earth do I keep the entryway slash mudroom clean and organized? I'd appreciate any helpful ideas you can give. She further clarified in this question that she's wearing boots now, all of her kids are wearing boots, things are muddy, things are slushy, and she's at her wits end just trying to get things clean and organized. So today I wanna show you what I've done in our entries in our home, share with you how that's worked for me, what we have to do to maintain that or maintain it to the best of our abilities, I'll say. And I'm also gonna give you some entry organization ideas that you can incorporate into your own home. These are fantastic whether you have a smaller entryway, whether you have a larger one, like a mudroom, these can be applied to pretty much any sort of entryway situation. I'm gonna begin with my favorite entry organization idea. This is my favorite one I've done of all time, and it's the Ikea shoe cabinet hack. So Ikea has a few different varieties of shoe cabinets, and these are very narrow little cabinets that you can mount right to your wall. You can add legs to them. You can leave them floating like I did in our entry, and you can store shoes in them vertically. So they're a fantastic use of space because you're using your wall space and you're keeping those shoes up and off the floor. Last January, I was so sick and tired of having my kids' shoes littered all over the floor. We have one little tiny closet in the entry and it just is not big enough for all the shoes we have. We live in Alberta, Canada, where the temperature can change rapidly from one day to the other. So one day it might be snowing, we want to wear snow boots. Next day, it might be raining. We want to wear rain boots. And then it might be dry a few days later. We want to wear shoes. So we do have a pretty good amount of footwear for the five of us in our household that we do use on a daily, weekly basis. What I did was I mounted two of the Ikea stall shoe cabinets side by side. So they're very modern looking shoe cabinets, but I wanted it to match our more traditional looking home. So I mounted those up on the wall in our narrow hallway. Our hallway is 42 inches, I believe, wide. These shoe cabinets are six inches wide. So I mounted them up on the side of the hallway. And then I just used some baseboard trim and I made sort of a board and batten feature all the way around these shoe cabinets. I added some wood filler in the crack between the cabinets and I primed and painted them to match the trim in our home exactly. So they kind of have this built in look, but it was a really budget friendly solution to store all of our family's shoes. Not only do we store shoes in those cabinets, we store accessories like gloves, hats, mittens, umbrellas, and all of that stuff. So I feel like adding one of those really slim shoe cabinets is a really great idea if you have a smaller entry and you want somewhere to put your shoes so they're not always in the way. So I will make sure to leave the tutorial for that full Ikea hack down in the show notes beneath this podcast. You can also check out the DIYmommy.com slash podcast to see all of the show notes from today's episode and all of the links and visuals that you might need to see. Next entry organization idea is to create an elevated boot tray in your entry. So if you live in an area like we do where you need boots for a majority of the year, or if you're like Jennifer who asked today's question and you have kids in boots, having a boot tray is essential. I personally like the more utility boot trays, those nice rubber ones with a nice high lip on all the sides to keep all of the water in place and not ruin our floors. So they don't look the greatest, but you can elevate them by placing some nice round river rocks or any rocks you can find. I found some at the dollar store and I just poured them inside the boot tray. It adds a beautiful textured rustic look. Plus the stones are practical too, because that's going to help all of your water from your boots drain through the rocks and down into the tray so your boots aren't sitting in puddles. You can also find some more aesthetically pleasing looking boot trays on all sorts of places on the internet. I think Crate and Barrel has one, Amazon has a few. I'll make sure to link those in the show notes of this episode. My next favorite entry organization hack is hooks. Hooks everywhere. I'm a huge fan of hooks. I've used them in a lot of entry DIYs that I've done. So you can create a dedicated hook wall in your home, like on the side of your entry in a mudroom. It's a perfect place for something like that. 
So you could create something with board and batten trim work, something with beadboard, and then you can integrate hooks into that. And I find that hooks are really easy for kids, especially if you have younger kids that have a hard time, you know, putting their jackets onto a hanger, hanging that hanger up in the closet. These are just a one step solution. So not only can you hang jackets up on hooks, you can hang coats, scarves, backpacks, lunch kits, and all of that kind of thing. And if you create a hook wall with board and batten trim or with beadboard, this is also gonna add some character and interest to your entryway, which I love. I love any kind of trim work to add something, just that little extra to your home. But then you have the practicality of it. So I love when aesthetically pleasing, you know, character, is paired with practicality in your home. That's a win-win situation. If you don't have any space for an actual hook wall feature, you could put hooks in hidden areas. So behind the doors in your closet, in the walls of your closet, just to add extra hanging space for things like purses, bags, and other accessories. Now let's talk about some small closet organization ideas. So if you have a tiny closet in your entry like I do, I think ours is maybe only like four feet wide, uh, you wanna make sure that you take advantage of every square inch of that closet. So what I would recommend is putting a two tiered boot rack or shoe rack in the very bottom. So I grabbed one from Ikea, again, just very budget friendly, very simple. Then you can put two rows of shoes or boots in there. And then a rod about two thirds up the closet is fantastic for all of your jackets that you wanna store in there. And then a shelf on top of that is perfect. So I just grabbed some shelving from Home Depot, some brackets from there and put that in our closet. And then I definitely recommend putting a few baskets on the shelf. So then you can actually store more things in those baskets on the shelf. If you have a bare shelf and you're just kind of folding things on top of that, you can't quite store as much. So things that you don't use as often or seasonal items are perfect for putting up in those baskets. So what I do in our home is I put things like our sandals and our beachwear in there in the winter months and then in the summer months I swap that around. So I put our winter stuff in those baskets. My next entry organization idea is using inexpensive dollar store items for small storage. Something that I think is really important to add in any entryway, large or small, is a small container or two to hold those little incidental smaller items. So we're talking about things like keys, sunglasses, lip gloss. All of those little items that I find really easy to lose, I'm losing my keys constantly. So if you have a dedicated little box to put your keys in every single time, you're more likely to keep track of them. And I know that this works for me. I like to go to places like Dollarama. So that's the dollar store here in Canada. Dollar Tree sometimes has some cute things too. Uh, they have lots of little containers, so you can find something to match the aesthetic, the look of your home. So a rustic little wooden box if you have more of a rustic or farmhouse home, or maybe something more streamlined, maybe something metal if you have a more modern home. And then put that somewhere in your entry. So if you have a nice narrow console or the nice narrow Ikea shoe cabinets, you can put that on top of one of those or on a small little entry cabinet in your home. And that's a fantastic place to round up all those small little items that you use every day. Let's talk about this entryway organization as being a family affair. I think the most important element to entry organization is making sure that you and your family are committed to keeping your entry relatively clean and organized. Of course, there's going to be seasons in your life that you don't have as much time to commit to organization and cleaning of your home. I'm not talking about perfection here. I'm talking about, you know, sort of a long standing commitment with you, your spouse, your partner, your kids to keeping that entry tidy so that it can be useful for your whole family. So after you've put some of these elements in place, so you've you've installed the shoe cabinet, you've organized your tiny closet, made every square inch count, you've added small containers for things, you've added some hooks, whatever you're going to do, make sure that everyone in your household knows where everything should go. So have a little, you know, family meeting, couples meeting, whatever, and talk through where the new things are, where you should put your keys, where you should hang your jackets. I know this sounds so funny and, and probably so obvious, but 
to me, it's almost like we have to have every time I organize something, we have to have this, this little family meeting, talk about where everything goes now and how we can work together as a family to make sure things go back in their new spots. What I like to do also is schedule a weekly clean with my family. So we do try so hard to pick up after ourselves. It's this ongoing battle <laughs> with my kids, but we do try. But every Saturday morning, we'll have a family house clean. So the kids each have, you know, their specific chores they have to do. We go through the house, you know, pick up and tidy everything and then clean everything. And the entry is part of that. So I find just having that weekly family dedicated to clean really helps keep everything clean and organized. In our home, the entryway can get completely trashed, if I'm being honest. Some months, I should say, it's just looking so wild because we just you know, have so much on the go as a family that month and we just don't have the time to pick up. But if we revisit it often and definitely touch it in that weekly clean, it makes such a difference. And it feels so good to have that first point in the home, feel organized, everything in its place and ready to go. So now it is time for this week's challenge. This week, I wanna challenge you to take a good look at the entry in your home or the entries in your home. I'd love for you to see if you could incorporate any of the entry organization ideas that I've mentioned in today's podcast. Then head over to my show notes at the DIYMommy.com slash podcast. Let me know in those comments which of these entry ideas you're gonna tackle, and then we can cheer each other on. Thanks so much for listening to today's podcast. If you wanna submit your own DIY or decor question to the podcast, head on over to the DIY diymommy.com slash podcast. There's a little form there that you can enter your question and I would love to answer it in a future episode. Have fun organizing and happy DIYing.